Having a child theme is very important, and I'd even go so far as to say mandatory if you plan to customize your WordPress themes at all. You see, without a child theme, you take the risk of all of your custom work going bye-bye with every single update from WordPress. And maybe not so much now with the version 3.2.1 of WordPress onwards because of some of their newer methods of updating, but hey, why take the chance? Now, what I mean by WordPress's newer method of updating is that now only the files in their updates are the files that have actually changed, not the entire WordPress file set. But if your customizations are located, say, in the style.css, and that happens to be one of those changed files with the next update, then poof, all of your custom work is gone. Okay, I think I made a pretty solid case as to why you should have a child theme. So let's go ahead and make a child theme. Now, since we're going to be doing a lot of editing with code, I'd like to go ahead and suggest to you my favorite text editor, and that would be Notepad++. I say this is my favorite because, well, one, it's free, and it's got a lot of bells and whistles, and it's free, and the lines are numbered, so it's easier for you to follow along with me so that I can just say, well, on this line, such and such, you got to change this, and that way it kind of eliminates a lot of the guesswork. Oh, and did I mention that it's free? So go ahead and download Notepad++ if you do not already have your favorite text editor in play. So anywho, that out of the way, go ahead and get that done. Now then, I'm going to go ahead and open up my text editor. Notepad++, and in this text editor I've pulled in the style.css, and you get this from the latest download from WordPress. Now if we head on over to WordPress.org, well, let me just open up another tab here, right here on the front page, go ahead and download this if you don't already have it, and then unzip this on your computer, because in that is going to be all the files you're ever going to need. Even if you've already got WordPress installed, go ahead and have this as a standby, just in case yeah, something gets screwed up along the way. You've got this, so you can just upload that particular file and overwrite the screwed up file, if that makes sense, and then you're back to where you were before you screwed up that file. So in this folder, once you've downloaded it and unzipped it, is the style.css for the 2011 theme. Let me just pull this up real quick and I'll show you what I'm talking about. Okay, once you've downloaded and unzipped your 3.2.1 folder, then it's going to look like this. You just open that up, and inside of the WP-Content, you're looking for themes, and you open that up, and you're looking for 2011, and you open that up, and scroll on down to the very bottom, and you got the style.css. Now then, you just go ahead and pull this out. Do not edit the original. Pull this out, and save it in another folder somewhere, maybe folder titled uh, Customizations, for example. And in addition to that, we're also going to take a screenshot kind of like this one, but as I hover over this one here, you can see the dimensions are 300 by 225, and it's a PNG file. Keep that in mind. That'll come up later on. But anyway, now that we got that out of the way, we want to close this out and come on back to our style.css file. Now, to create a child theme, what we want to do is copy some code from WordPress.org's codex related to child themes. So let's go back to my browser for a second, and we're done with this page, but let's go over to this one here, and we are at the URL codex.wordpress.org forward slash child themes. Don't forget to capitalize the child and the themes and the underscore, otherwise you're probably going to get a page not found error. So with that said, we want to scroll on down here to right here. Yep, we want to just copy this into our clipboard. Don't worry about what it says. We'll just copy that into our clipboard, and I'll get to the what it says here in just a minute. And inside of our style.css that we've taken out of that one folder, and we saved it in another folder. Matter of fact, let me go ahead and do that now. Now, I've gone ahead and created a folder on my computer titled WordPress, and inside of that folder, I've created another folder titled 2011-child. Now, then, inside of this folder, this is where I'm, going, where I'm going to keep all of my files related to my child theme. And if we just open this up, put that guy in there, and here we are. Now, then, what we want to do is we want to delete everything in here. So I'm just going to control key on my keyboard, hold that down, hit the letter A as in Apple, selects everything, hit the delete key, delete everything. As you can see, we're back to line one, nothing's on here, and I'm going to paste that code that I copied from the WordPress.org site uh, related to child themes. So let's go over this real quick. There's only two lines in here that are actually mandatory. The rest of this is just uh, fluff or eye candy or, you know, optional. And the mandatory items is the theme name and the template. 
The rest of the stuff can be anything you want. I'd say leave it in there, especially if down the line you might plan to, say, flip this site or sell this WordPress site or theme. And in the event that you do, then you've got some items here that might point back to you. Who knows? It might churn a little extra business your way. But, for example, the author URI, you can put your URL in here, pointing to the About page. It tells folks a little bit more about you your name here and the description you can be as wordy as you want or as limited as you want again it's totally up to you it's totally optional and I'll show you here in a second where this stuff's going to show up at now a quick rundown as to how a child theme performs in the browsers the child theme style.css file takes precedent over the parent theme in this case that would be the 2011 theme the child theme takes precedent over the parent theme. In other words, as far as the browser is concerned, the parent theme style.css no longer exists as soon as the child comes into the picture. And there might be certain times, especially the way that I'm going to be doing things, there might be certain times when you want elements of the parent theme style.css to come into play. And to do that, we have this simple little line of code that we want to put in here. And if we come back to the wordpress.org child themes page, let me see if I can find it in here somewhere. Right, here we go. This pulls in the style.css from the 2011 directory within that folder. And this brings to mind another important fact is that the child theme folder, and we haven't uploaded it yet, but when we do, the child theme folder needs to be in the same directory or the same folder that contains the parent theme folder. And I'll cover that here in just a sec as soon as we get done making this and getting it uploaded. But now I got this in my clipboard, head on back over to our Notepad++, and right here we want to paste that little bit of code in there. Now, just another little tidbit of info, there can be zero CSS styling above this URL right here. Don't ask me why, I don't know, just bear with me, you don't do it. In other words, you can't put this down here and then have a bunch of CSS stuff up here, it's not going to work. So that's why I put this right underneath the head info right here. So let me see here. I think that's basically it. This, by the way, is our child theme. Let's go ahead and save this. And let's go ahead and upload this 2011-child theme into our directory. Before we do that, I want to show you something real quick. If we go over to the actual WordPress site I'm going to be demonstrating this on and log into the dashboard, in the Appearance subpanel under Themes, these are the default themes that come with your WordPress installation, that being 3.2.1 anyway. And that is the 2011 theme that we're going to be messing around with and the older 2010 theme. And just a quick rundown, that head info, this stuff right here where it says the URI of the author, the template, the version number, all this stuff here, the description, that is this stuff right here. So let's go ahead and navigate over to my FTP client. I'm using Qt FTP in this case. I'm logged into the root directory of my WordPress site and you want to open up the wp-content folder, directory, folder, whatever, and then open up the themes folder and then right here in the same folder or directory as the parent theme is where you want to upload the child theme. This is it here. So let's go ahead and just select that and then left click on upload and ta-da, we're done. I mean, there wasn't much in there, so it's not going to take long at all. Let's head back over to the site, and let's go ahead and refresh this. We should have the new theme popped in here. Now, as you can see here, this doesn't look very pretty because there's no image in there. That's that screenshot I was showing you earlier that we should also add, but it's, again, man it's not mandatory. It's optional. You see here the information that was in our Notepad++, like your name here, your name here. That's what's showing up here. The author URI right here. So you can kind of get an idea as to what all you can put in here, comparing it to the other items that are already filled out. And if we go ahead and get an, an image shot or a screenshot in here, then you know, we can add that again later. But this is something we're going to be working with. So if we go ahead and activate this, well, first, before we activate this, let me show you what the site looks like right now. This is what it looks like right now. Let's go ahead and activate that child theme. And you can see it's activated now. New theme's activated. Now, before we get into this, one thing I want to point out, though, is the menu structure. Because really, with a functioning child theme, nothing should change. Nothing should change at all, except since with this child theme, we have not yet messed with the custom menu. Let me just show you what it looks like. Yeah, I'll do that. Just refresh the page, and you can see the 
Of course, the header image changes, but that's because it's 3.2.1. But the rest of it is exactly the same. Same title here, same everything except for the custom menus is not working right now. This is all the pages that I've got on this site right now. So we come on back here, and right now I've got, this is the original structure, but with the changing of the theme, which is exactly what we did, we changed from the parent theme to the child theme, the primary menu has not been selected which it used to be main and it is now and this is the main right here but this isn't a video on custom menus so I'm not going to go into that but if we come back here now and refresh now it looks exactly like the original did because everything that is on the parent theme is being pulled in except for the style.css unless we have that one line of code right here which tells the browsers to oh by the way pull in everything from the parent theme style.css that is not being loaded down here. Anything that you load down here will overwrite this information up here. So as we get into these series of videos on customizing our 2011 theme, if say for example we want to change the background color of the content area, well the background color of the content area is already defined in the parent theme which is being brought in through this right here but if we define this oh so we want it to be red we want that background color in the content area to be red by us having this in the child theme browsers are going to allow the style.css within the child theme to take precedence over that same coding within the parent theme so then it will overwrite that chunk of code from the parent theme and make the background red Hopefully that makes sense, but as we get further into these videos, you'll see just how much sense it does make. And that's going to bring us to the end of this video on how to create a child theme.